Great. Today, our viewer has asked, do you think the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate is a good guide? Oh my, the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. Uh, when I first heard that Harvard was coming out with their food guide, I had some really high expectations, but alas, they've been somewhat deflated. And when we look at the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate in detail, I think you'll see why. Let's bring it up and have a look at it. Okay. So here is the vaunted Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. And as we go around the plate, knowing who I am and how I'm promoting a whole food plant-based diet, you'll see those areas that I don't think they quite come up to the 21st century standards of, we, of what we know to be truly healthy for the human body. So let's go around and have a look. Uh, I was very happy to see a good quarter of the plate is green and says vegetables, yay. And they're absolutely right. The more veggies and the greater the variety, the better, yay. So veggies, 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 let's hear it for Harvard. And potatoes and French fries don't count. Mm, French fries certainly don't. Boiled potatoes, I don't think are so terrible. And I think they've got a, a good place uh, in the healthy diet. But of course, the colored potatoes, the white, I'm sorry, the sweet potatoes, you know, the orange ones and the purple ones, they're even uh, more loaded with nutrients. But uh, the occasional white potato is okay. But French fries, something else. They are just sponges that soak up the uh, the free radical laden vegetable oil in the in the fryer there. Don't eat french fries. Uh, so let's hear it for their emphasis on veggies. Quarter of the plate, good for them. And eat, moving on down, eat plenty of uh, fruits of all colors. Yay, Harvard. Uh, they're right on the money there. Uh, and if we go up to the upper right here, whole grains, okay. Uh, eat whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, yay. That's, a, uh, that's an improvement for what it used to be. Limit refined grains like white rice and white bread. Yes, they're absolutely right. These guys went to Harvard, so they are pretty smart on that score. Uh, and while we're in this upper right-hand corner, the best to drink, and I was really happy to see water. It really is the best drink. And they came right out and said, drink water to your coffee with little or no sugar. Okay, we're talking about human beings. Limit milk and dairy. Well, good for them. That was courageous given how thunderous the dairy industry's response can be when they come down on uh, someone who transgressed their desire to be consumed in large quantities and directing the public to do so. But Harvard did kind of defer to their power, uh, limited to one to two servings daily. So they want you to consume dairy every day. Here's where my enthusiasm for their guide starts uh, decreasing as they want you to consume something made from the milk of a cow every day. Avoid sugary drinks. Yay, Harvard, they're right on that one. And then we move on down to healthy protein. And so right off the bat, uh, choose fish and poultry. Yeah, well, now they purposely didn't have red, you know, red beef in there. So that's, I guess, a little bit of a, an improvement. Uh, but to say that fish and poultry are the best choice for protein and leave and then group beans and nuts together, uh, you know, they're leaving out all the vast family of legumes, uh, peas, chickpeas, lentils, uh, the whole family of beans, uh, various type of nuts, especially walnuts that omega-3s. Uh, so, you know, the plant protein rich foods are kind of put into a uh, subservient position near in their plan. Uh, limit red meat. Okay, you know, they've got the beef industry uh, breathing down their shoulders there or uh, down their back. They can't uh, do more than say limit it, but fair enough. Avoid bacon, cold cuts, and processed meats. Yes, they had to say that. Those are all been shown to be class one carcinogens. They, they have to say avoid those. So yay, I'm giving credit for that kind of, you know, given 85%. And then we kind of breeze past this upper left here, use healthy oils like olive and canola for cooking and on salads and at the table. So the question is, is there anything really uh, a healthy oil? Uh, do they not damage your arteries and, and increase cancer risk and uh, make your blood thicker and, and uh, have, 
uh, various adverse effects attached to some of the oils. Yeah, and they just kind of blow past that. And, and when they say use healthy oils, I'm afraid it opens the door to someone with uh, a big crue of olive oil, pouring it on the pasta by the cup fill. Oh, Harvard said healthy oils are good for me. Mediterranean diet, you know, pour on the olive oil. I'm afraid it opens the door to that. And that really takes it out of the healthy eating plate. A, a teaspoon of olive oil on your salad for flavoring or a couple of drops of sesame oils in an Asian stir fry, you know, that's an appropriate use of these oils as a flavoring, but to sanction them as a healthy ingredient, I'm afraid it opens the, or, or the, opens the door to oil abuse there. So I give them credit for, you know, giving some credence to modern nutritional research and yay, a tip of the hat for their little character here, reminding us to stay active, good for them. But uh, again, they had to backpedal here. They didn't come out as strongly as they could regarding the dairy and the meat and the oils, uh, et cetera. And uh, so I'll give them a C plus, you know, B minus on it as far as truly healthy eating. Certainly uh, compared to the standard American diet, it's certainly an improvement. Is it enough improvement to actually start reversing disease and melt away plaques out of the arteries and cool off the inflammatory diseases of uh, autoimmune disease and all the things we know a whole food plant-based diet can do mm, uh, with all the oils and the dairy and the meat and the poultry. Uh, I'm dubious that it's really going to have the health enhancing effect that a truly ho healthy whole food plant-based diet can uh, really provide for us as we now see. So there's an old saying, you know, when the dog plays the violin, don't criticize the quality of the play. You know, the, the fact that it's playing it at all is wonderful. And I'll put uh, Harvard's healthy eating plate in that category. You know, it's the dog playing the violin. They, you know, they're, they're making progress. It's a lot better than the basic four food groups from years ago. Uh, but uh, they still got to go to way. <laughs> they ought to go back to school. They ought to go to Harvard and... Uh, uh, and well, they, they got to do better than that. Uh, so uh, I give them credit for, uh, for, for, for making the effort. But uh, I think folks who are tuned into the whole food plant-based world could come up with even a better plate yet. And now I hope you know how to do it. Uh, uh, if you want a really proper plate, go to PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, pcrm.org, see their healthy eating plate. They'll show you what a really uh, disease reversing health enhancing plate really looks like. And that's the plate you ought to be following. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you wanna see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.